Yesterday, I got Horizon Zero Dawn and pushed out two quick and dirty videos. These were uploaded mainly for me to see how the game looks on YouTube with my specific HUD setup and brightness settings, and future videos will be a more satisfying length, both for myself and for the viewers. I started this game on very hard from the get-go, so all my thoughts will be applied to that difficulty level, though most of the things I say would be applicable to lower difficulties. The biggest difference would be that on lower difficulties the numbers are on your side more than they are on the enemies. Very hard also permanently locks away aim assist, whereas on hard and lower, aim assist can be toggled on or off. So what do I think about Horizon? I enjoy it a lot. It's not quite as smooth as something like Metal Gear Solid 5, and the depth of the stealth is not quite the same. It's really an action game with heavy RPG elements, but it doesn't do the things that I usually dislike about RPGs, and this game somehow managed to pull me in very deep. There are still times where my numbers versus the enemy's numbers will be the main deciding factor in an engagement, but if I hit robots in the eye and humans in the head, they'll usually die in one shot. The same goes for when I stealth kill them, and if I just want to get by, tossing rocks to distract them and ghost behind them is very reliable. The above tactics provide some method of bypassing the traditional numbers heavy element of RPGs, and that's really encouraging to me. Upgrading yourself is obviously going to help, no matter what game you're playing, and Horizon is no exception, but it's nice that if you're struggling on an encounter, you have options for varying approaches, you have the opportunity to win through your own intelligence and skill. It's very rare that your only recourse is to just grind more, like in some RPGs that are too oppressive to their players. All in all, I like Horizon a lot. Let's talk about some of the stuff that stood out to me. The healing system is one of the first things you learn, and the way it works is really cool. It's one of the most clever healing systems I might have seen in gaming so far, but it's so simple that I'd be surprised if other games haven't implemented it in this exact way before. Aloy has a health bar and a medicine pouch. The health bar is red, and the medicine pouch is the green bar under it. Collecting medicinal plants puts a percentage of health into the medicine pouch, and then tapping up on the d-pad will drain health from the pouch into Aloy's actual HP until her HP is either full or until the medicine pouch is empty. This is really clever because it means that when you heal, you don't have nuanced control over how much you use, and grabbing whatever healing berries you can find while running around is always a good thing to do. The decision between whether to pop your heal or to save it is a pretty interesting one, but most of the time it's a good idea to just heal anyway and then deal with the consequences later. At least this has been the case for me on Very Hard. Crafting is up next. Crafting is simple. It does what it needs to do. Everything you kill yields useful materials, so do all the plants that you can harvest. Because of this, nothing you do in Horizon Zero Dawn feels useless, like there's some value in all of your actions. Everything you do changes the game state somehow, and it either puts you in a better or worse position. Using the parts that you get from killing machines, animals, or human enemies, you can build various upgrades for yourself. You can make modifications to your weapons and armor, or you can trade for stuff with merchants. You can also craft your own ammo on the fly. You can do it by opening your inventory and navigating around to craft what you need, but it's great that Guerrilla Games lets you craft ammo with your weapon wheel open. It makes sense to have ammo crafting be so quickly accessible, so you never have to stop the flow of a battle to open your full inventory. Crafting arrows by holding the button down with your weapon wheel open is super, super satisfying, and it plays a kinesthetically pleasing animation where your crafted arrows just pop, pop, pop out of the screen. Skilling is as expected. You've got three skill trees, which are basically stealth, combat, and environment, which itself I loosely split up into crafting, healing, and machine control. Combat is real-time, and it's genuinely satisfying for the most part, even though I don't do a lot of damage to enemies due to playing on very hard. Instead of cooldowns and active skills, you have different weapons with different attack speeds, and these can be swapped out for a weapon with higher or lower attack speed, and higher or lower damage. You can also buff your weapons by crafting modifications onto them, which usually, you know, your weapons usually have one or two mod slots. There's a real sense of planning that goes into fighting some of the bigger machines, and it's pretty intense. 
Scanning them with Aloy's focus shows you both their elemental strengths and weaknesses, as well as their structural weaknesses. And what I mean by that is, a Watcher is structurally weak to damage on its eye. You know, shooting it in the eye will do crazy damage, while a Grazer combines a structural and elemental weakness. So, Grazers are elementally weak to fire damage if you hit the Blaze Canisters on their backs. Knowing what enemies will be hurt by is pretty important, especially in fights with mixed enemy compositions, because you can easily be overwhelmed mentally by how much, how many different things are going on. The amount of crazy chain reaction damage you can do to certain herds of enemies is downright absurd. A great example is setting fire to a grazer's blaze canisters, which then explode, which chain the on-fire status to the grazers around it, which makes their blaze canisters explode, and the whole thing just spreads until you've AoE killed an entire group of these things. I've heard it said that The Witcher 3 contains a similar preparatory feel, where knowing your enemy and readying yourself with the appropriate weapons, traps, and potions is the best way to ensure a successful encounter. And while I didn't enjoy The Witcher 3 very much, and so I quit playing it very early, Horizon seems to be doing for me the things that The Witcher 3 could not do. I would go as far as to call Horizon and The Witcher 3 very similar games, with Horizon being a little easier to get into and enjoy right off the bat. I'm playing on very hard, so two hits from anything will usually kill me, and that means I'm trying to get a handle on the stealth mechanics as best as I can. The thing that I can say is, stealth works. Enemies consistently and reliably investigate your lure skill when you want to pull one toward yourself, and the same goes for rocks that you throw. I never had the issue of expecting the enemy to investigate my distraction, but then being oblivious to it. A nice bonus is that if you toss a rock, you can go pick it back up again. It's not it's not spent ammo, it's an actual physical object that remains in the game world. This gives Horizon a bit of a deeper sense of permanence, and it lets you use the distraction item liberally. Getting melee takedowns is functional. You can actually get the prompt to do one from pretty far away. And some of the stealth kill animations, especially on humans, look very cool. And I haven't had a chance to try out Air Assassinates and Ledge Assassinates just yet, but I do have both of those skills unlocked. Now, hitting things with ranged weapons feels a bit weird. Especially with Very Hard's emphasis on hitting nothing but weak points, there have been many times where I've thought that I should have caused an enemy a ton of damage, but I've only scratched their armor instead, even though I anticipated my arrow would go where I wanted it. I don't have issues aiming in other games, neither on controllers nor with a mouse, but I think I'm just not used to the way arrows work yet, or I don't yet have a grasp on the precision the game expects from me. I think it's important to note that there are different kinds of bows, and Horizon is very RPG-ish, so my attempts at using the default bow for long-range headshots are probably not a good idea. Switching to the sharpshooter bow, which is basically a sniper, and using that with precision arrows, it removes a lot of that frustration, and I noticed being able to hit things much more easily with it. If that's the case, what I might do is sell my default bow entirely, and run two main weapons, the sharpshooter bow for long-range hard-hitting weak point shots, and a very fast-firing but low-damage bow for short-range that I can loose arrow after arrow from repeatedly in order to stack elemental damage. I'm not sure if that's going to be super viable, but I'll see how things go. I know that there's a weapon called the Rattler, which is basically a short-ranged gun that rattles off a huge amount of bolts in a short time, so maybe I should consider picking that up too. At the shortest of short ranges, in melee, my spear does tremendous damage to the enemy, and since it hits so much harder than any of my other weapons, I've taken to playing Horizon a bit like Dark Souls, where I'll just melee enemies down and dodge when they flash red to telegraph their attack. Knocking enemies down with heavy attacks also lets you do a ground stab, which the game calls a critical hit. These are super strong, and they'll usually spell doom for the enemy that gets hit with one, unless they're pretty big and, you know, one of the tougher machines. I like the gameplay, but fighting right now, while it's super fun, doesn't quite feel as good as I wanted it to. I don't feel very effective yet. One of the reasons why that could be is because of how inflated everything is on very hard, and I think that playing around with different weapon loadouts and paying more attention to enemy weaknesses is probably going to help me out a lot when it comes to this. 
Every once in a while you'll reach little zones where you can climb things. You can tell something's a climbing path because it'll have these yellow trims on the ledges and handholds, or it'll clearly look like a climbable ledge. Jumping onto it with X lets you start climbing the thing Assassin's Creed style where just tilting the left stick in the direction of the next handhold is often enough to make Aloy auto-climb wherever you wish. Sometimes though, you will need to tap jump to have her make a longer distance traversal, which is fun, and it gives a little bit of extra player input to something that's mostly automated. Now, the big shocker is that I really like the story so far. I think I need to make clear how big a deal this is, because usually I'm the type of guy who you know, I play games for their mechanics and for their gameplay. I don't expect a game's story to genuinely captivate me and to keep me excited. I used to when I was younger, but at this point in my life, I've played so many games that most of the stories in them I only used for an excuse or justification or a reason to be doing the things that my character happens to be doing. I play games because I enjoy interactivity, I enjoy doing stuff, I enjoy solving problems and challenges, and the story is only ever a secondary draw for me, and that's if I care about it at all. This might still be true with Horizon, but I'm surprised to say that I'm enjoying this story much more than I thought I would. It's been a long time since I was this interested in a game's world, characters, and atmosphere, enough to want to find out what happens next. So far, I've been enjoying the story so much that I kind of don't want to talk about it at all, because I'd like to keep as much a secret as I can. The most I would do is provide some clarity on what background we've already been shown in promotional material. This is a world set in the far future. Humanity as we consider it has practically gone extinct. Some great cataclysm happened, and the humans that are left have to retrace the footsteps of history pretty much from the beginning. That means no large societies, that means literal tribes all believing in different things and having different customs and rules. Now one thing that I found interesting that most people probably wouldn't think much of is that despite being sent back to the equivalent of the Stone Age, the societies in Horizon Zero Dawn all use metal shards as a universally accepted currency. That suggests to me that they're well on their way to regaining the scale of civilization that used to exist millennia ago in that world. Don't know what I mean? Let's take a short tangent. Money may or may not be the root of all evil, but it is the great unifier. With money, it doesn't matter if you or I believe in the same god, we can still cooperate. You don't need to trust me and know me intimately, as long as we both trade in money, because money simply functions as agreed upon by the entire society. No trust is necessary. This is why money enables societal cooperation on an inter-tribal and eventually massive scale. With money, it doesn't matter if you and I don't necessarily want what the other person has. If I want your apples, but you don't want my chicken, that would normally stop us from trading and one of us might starve. But with money, that's not the case. Because both of us own money and money is a legal fiction that everyone wants, a trade can be made where it would normally not be possible. By creating the concept of a symbol that everyone wants, humanity transcended the need to come to an agreement based on actual existing supplies, and this allowed us a massive amount of flexibility in terms of how we could develop our families, our neighborhoods, cities, countries, and eventually the world. Money transcended religion, politics, individual tribal social customs, and other things that prevented humanity from becoming the great civilization that we know today. So if these many societies in Horizon can all agree on a single system of money, then there's a lot of hope that they'll eventually return to the stage of civilization that we were at during the age of the so-called metal world. I recommend you guys read this book called Sapiens for more info on this cool stuff, because I don't want to extend this tangent any further than I already have. There's going to be a link in the description to that book. Anyway, while all this is happening, the machines and AIs that our civilization gave rise to before we all got wrecked have basically inherited the world, and they've become the new apex predators of the planet Earth. The many tribes that exist in this world don't understand how to make full use of technology, while at the same time they both fear it and despise it. No longer are people the top of the food chain. Machines are. And machines are to be killed, hunted, dissected for materials, but never to be adored or loved. 
there's a really cool tension and interaction between the old world, you know, the metal world, as the tribes people call it, and the current societal paradigms that our protagonist, Aloy of the Nora tribe, finds herself existing in. All in all, it's a pretty cool story whose world really works well for the kind of tale that's being told. It really feels like Guerrilla Games created this concept of this cool world and just completely nerded out writing the lore before they even wrote a single line of code. That's not likely how development actually went, but that's sure what it feels like. There's a bit of that Assassin's Creed vibe to the whole thing. Most of the playtime involves the current world, but the most important parts of the story and the creepiest sections involve the previous civilization. It's just that in this game, we are the ones who came before. We're all dead, and we're seeing through the eyes of this girl who was born into a world that our own society has been long gone from, with only echoes and holograms remaining to prove we even existed at all. It's a really interesting feeling. All in all, I really enjoy Horizon. I predict that I'll keep enjoying it for a while, and if you're the type of person that enjoys stealth, action, RPGs, Monster Hunter, or the good parts of open world video games, you'll probably find something to love about Horizon Zero Dawn. Aloy is quickly becoming one of my favorite fictional characters, and I look forward to seeing how she solves her problems guided by my hand. So thank you all for checking this out. I'll be back soon to hit you with stealth kills on some human enemies in Horizon, but until then, stay sneaky.